was built during the Second World War and had most of them away fighting and doing other war work. It was almost entirely built by women. And it's said to be the strongest bridge across the Thames in London. So make of that what you will. There's also the great underbridge in London to be built at every schedule on the road budget. So hats off to women, what I say. And if you tell out a woman to practice that work, they built it, they sell the concrete. And they did all that whilst they shot at and bombed. In fact, uh, all three bridges, the bridge in London suffer any war damage in the Second World War. And for those reasons, London Bridge, sorry, Warbury Bridge, I should say, is the Baby's Bridge. Yeah. Yeah. Now, evidence on the right here, that red brick building, that is known as the Oxo Building. Oxo gets a lot of it's a brand of beef stock cubes. Now, that building is all controversial as advertising has always been banned on the River Thames. So the architect got around the ban by spreading out the word on its windows. And all four phase that tower. And not mention that, the only application. Uh, they couldn't ask them to take the down. It's actually part of the structure. So it was a bit of a cheeky one. And those windows light up at night, but it ran effectively as advertising. Because 90 years on, Oxo is still the leading brand of beef stock in the country. And it is in fact free advertising because Oxo don't even own the building anymore. At the top there, underneath the glass canopy, uh, that is a rooftop restaurant uh, run by Harvey Nichols. But I bet they do really good gravy. Now, ahead of us, that red bridge, the next one we'll be going under, that is Blackfriars Bridge. Now, Blackfriars Bridge takes its name from the area over to our left. It's known as Blackfriars, it's called Blackfriars because in the medieval period, there was a fiery set up there by the, uh, by the Dominican monks. And the Dominicans famously wear white robes with a black mantle. And they are the Black Friars. That's how the area goes to stay. That's how the bridge goes to stay. <clears throat> now, when we get under, uh, Black Fires Bridge. So I left and right and see what looked like the largest bird tables in the world. Painted wreck is coming to view now. They are the old stanchions for the old St. Paul's Railway Bridge. They used to span the Thames in. They were built in the Victorian era. With the advent of diesel uh, locomotives, it was deemed no longer strong enough to carry trains. So <coughs> And if they died away here, that would destroy the Black Fire Bridge alongside it. So I left there we have the Dome of St Paul's Cathedral. St Paul, that's actually the fifth St Paul Cathedral that's been on that site. This one was built by the Great Fire London in 1666, destroyed the previous one. To tell you a little bit more about that on the way back. Over to our right, that white timber frame building there. Uh, that's not as old as it looks, that building, despite its appearance, only dates from 1997. It's a very faithful recreation of Shakespeare's Globe Theatre, which used to stand just about 100 yards behind the present one, where those cranes are. It was built by Sam Wanamaker as a tribute to William Shakespeare, because no tribute to Shakespeare existed in London before that was built. Uh, he actually spent some permission as has a thatched roof, and ever since the Great Father in 1666, that rooms have been banned in London as they are subject to serious fires.
say that I'm right. At 1,016 feet tall and 309.6 meters, the shark, the tallest building in Western Europe. And the show was designed by the one who named Italian architect, Mr. Renzo Cano. It's a combination of offices, apartments, restaurants. There's a hotel there called the Shangri La. It takes up 18 stories of the building. Now the Shangri La Hotel is not a five-star hotel, not a six-star hotel. It's a seven-star hotel. And later, if you look ahead of you, we can see the central span of Tower Bridge has been raised. This is quite unusual. Only happens once or twice a day max. And look at you, the stand, the central stand is fully open. Great photo opportunity there. Now we're lucky to stand for a little while because it's going to sail boat and some ship anchor is there. We're just going through it and we're much quicker than the sailboat. And those two parts which have been raised by the way, they're known as bascules. Good ones built. Tower is what we call a combined suspension and bascule bridge. And the word bascule comes from French. Now each one of those bascules weighs around about 1,200 tons by the way. Uh, quite a bit of engineering. Despite appearances, Tower Bridge, uh, by London standards, it's particularly old. It dates from 1894. Built at the time when London was the biggest and uh, busiest part in the world. That's why the central spread to be raised or lowered. There's no large cargo ship to cover down. Because, uh, from where we are now, looking ahead of us, is looking east. Under the over 18 miles of docks stretching down the river tent. Not all moved down now, no, there is no longer a port. But at one point, the height of the empire, one third of the one's commercial shipping, passed through the port of London. And then, gentlemen, I uh, remember I told you it's a good idea to wave at people on the bridges, but it's actually a good idea on Tower Bridge. Because there's an old seaman's legend that says, if you are a... It's an old seaman's legend that says, if you are... If you wave at someone from the ship, and uh, they're on the you don't want your back. You can pay everyone on the ship, they're not But the central span has been raised. There are a lot of pedestrians on the bridge. So, uh, there we go, thank you, one. There we go, I didn't take this one. So I stress we all go and buy a lottery ticket this week, ladies and gentlemen. Nailed on. And gentlemen, please do remain on your senior seats on the upper deck. We're about to do a U-turn, which is going to give us fantastic photo opportunities. There's some really great angles of a panoramic shot of the uh, of the Tower Bridge. The Tower Bridge was opened in 1894 by the then Prince of Wales, and then become King Edward VII. And the stone or cladding on Tower Bridge is completely unnecessary. Have put their period for cosmetic reasons so the Tower Bridge wouldn't clash with the Tower of London. It's right next to it. A Tower Bridge is an attraction in its own right. Known as the Tower Bridge Experience. You go in there, you learn all about the history of the bridge, see the old mechanical workings. And you go up those walkways, you'll see as we go under, those walkways, the floor, is partly made of glass. So when you walk under them, you look straight down, you're going to look straight look down, a hundred foot drop. 
if you've got their points. Personally, I've got Keelan White. Now, uh, that's something that happened in 1951, doesn't happen to say, 1951. Due to heavy fog and a signalling error, a London double decker bus was allowed through just the central span was rising. Now, the great presence of mind the driver realised the only way they were going to get out of it alive was if he put his foot down on the accelerator, which he did. And he jumped part of the central span in a London double decker bus. No one was harmed. For his bravery and quick thinking, he was rewarded with £10 and an extra day off work. They were hard but fair in those days. Although one of the uh, guys on the bus was actually getting married back that year, he asked the bus driver to be his best man. Now over time right now, Jim, remember down at the House of Parliament, I said they'll take you up here by boat. You've been arrested for treason. If you look over to the, the bank over there, it's their art, they've got some writing above it. The writing says, entry to the traitor's gate. What happened there, that never used to be bricked up. What used to happen is they would row you up there, they would row you right in uh, to the town of London by the entrance. That was basically Britain's very first one-way system. Because once you went in there, you weren't coming out. That's how Guy Fawkes was taken to the Tower of London, that's how Anthony was taken up there, and many, many, many other unfortunate souls. And so right there we have the City of London skyline. So right there we have the City of London skyline. The skyscraper on the far left is known as the Walkie Talkie. Uh, there's one to the middle called the Scalpel, and the Scalpel. The cheese grater, the gherkin. To our left here, this water and anchor, this is HMS Belfast. All 11,500 tons of it. Now you can go aboard HMS Belfast, and she's a museum, she's part of the Imperial War Museum. She's a perfectly preserved World War II cruiser. Perfectly preserved to the to the Second World War, but it's took part of the D Day landings. Uh, those guns are a very powerful, those guns can fire a half ton high explosive shell to help miles. Well, they're not half the size of a tennis coin. Mm. Oh, it's about right there. That older building, the white stone, that is the custom house. That's where. Uh, 150 years ago, if you were a uh, sea captain, a ship's captain, and you came into London with a merchant ship full of goods, that's where you went and paid the tax. So that's where a lot of Britain's wealth was uh, originally accumulated. The next I was building along, the yellow brick one, uh, with a rather elegant fish weather vanes on top. That is Old Pennsylvania Fish Market. For many centuries, London's main fish market. At one point, the largest fish market in London had over 120,000 tons of fish going through every year. It's been converted into an event center now, they say. They first converted over, it took four months for the smell of fish to leave the building. And the fish ponds at Pennsylvania were notorious their bad language. And in fact, it's often said that Pennsylvania Fish Market is where the fish was fresh but the language was found. And uh, before it was famous, Michael Caine was a fish at Pillars Gate, as were the Cray Twins. 
Now, head of us here, they gentlemen. Nondescript modern bridge. This is the world famous London Bridge. They're about to go under it, ladies and gentlemen, but don't worry, despite what you might have heard, it's not falling down. In fact, the current London Bridge only dates from 1973. The previous London Bridge was sold to an American gentleman who took it brick by brick back to the Lake Havasu City Resort in Arizona, where it now stands over the eponymous Lake Havasu. Now, the nursery rhyme, London Bridge is falling down actually has its basis in real life events. In the 13th century, King Henry III gave London Bridge to his wife. So in those days, he had to pay some money to cross over the bridge. However, he was supposed to set aside that money for repairs and maintenance. She didn't say that, she regarded it all as her own personal spending money. The bridge fell into disrepair and did eventually fall down. That's why the nursery rhyme goes, London Bridge is falling down, my fair lady. To uh, left there, uh, that church well, the church well of Southwark Southern Cathedral dates from the 14th century. Now we know for a fact that William Shakespeare set foot in Southern Cathedral because his brother Edward is buried there. And we know for a fact that he attended his brother's funeral. It's a good landmark if you go to Borough Market, by the way. So it's right next to it. If you're not sure of the route. Now ahead of us, this next bridge, Nature and I have scoured the history books. Uh, that's Cannon Street Rail Bridge. There's really nothing interesting to say about Cannon Street Rail Bridge, but from that, in my opinion, it's the ugliest bridge in London. And what you must do, whatever you do, don't look at those windows on the right underneath the bridge, as that is a sword. And they didn't realise they had boats going past, so the glass is see-through. They do sometimes get people walking past in a state of complete undress. And I know how much that will shock you guys, so I say I am warning you so you can avert your gaze. I see you looking. But no, they are right. They're wise to us at the moment. And uh, no nudity going on over there. I can sense the disappointment. from London's least attractive bridge to probably its most attractive. This is Southwark Bridge out of us here. Uh, it was built in that very attractive Art Deco style, 1921. It actually stood in for London Bridge in the 1964 film Mary Poppins. Walt Disney came over to London, he took one look at the Southwark Bridge, one look at the London Bridge said, no, 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 we'll use Southwark Bridge, we'll just tell Americans that's London Bridge. Who's gonna know the difference? Despite its august cinema career, that's a rather wistful nickname of the Lonely Bridge, as it has the lowest footfall of any of the London bridges and the uh, lowest amount of traffic. But it's good for a romantic walk, because those are gas lights up there. So you can take a romantic gaslit walk over the River Thames. Over to our left, that building with a very tall brick stack. That is the Tate Modern Gallery. That is uh, the largest, most successful modern art gallery in the world. Personally, I like modern gallery, but it's not your thing, don't worry. It, for a start up, it's free to go in. They also have an award-winning cocktail bar in the gallery. So knock a couple of those back, and the, the art will probably become much more appealing. The reason it's got that rather unusual architecture, it's actually the old Bankside Power Station. By 1981, Bankside Power Station was rather out of date, they decommissioned it. A couple of years they didn't really think about what to do with the building, or what they couldn't decide what to do with it. But by 2000, they, did, they decided to open it as a modern art gallery, and it, like I say, is the largest, most successful in the world. Now, there was this bridge here, 
you might recognise it for the films because uh, this is the uh, Millennium Bridge. The Millennium Bridge is destroyed very early on in Harry Potter and the Half Blood Prince. It's also destroyed in the most recent Mission Impossible movie. Quite what Hollywood directors have got against the bridge, I have no idea. But uh, they do have a fondness for destroying it. To our right, the dome of St. Paul Cathedral again. It's the second army <coughs> dome this time in the world. Only St. Peter's in Rome is larger. And of course, St. Paul's is where, uh, on, on July the 29th, 1981, as the venue for the wedding of Prince Charles and Lady Diana, one of the great globally televised events of the 20th century. Now this bridge, this footbridge, is also known as the Wobbly Bridge. So when it opened in June 2000, they very eagerly awaited for it. People walked over it. They noticed a very violent wobble of up to seven inches. So much so, some people were seasick over the side. They had to close it down for two years for modifications. But the architect, Sir Norman Foster, refused to accept it was his fault. He went online TV and said, no, there wasn't one of these idols to blame the wobble. It's Londoners. They walk funny. They accused Londoners of marching all over the place and thus causing the bridge to wobble. You may have guessed that Norman Foster was not a Martin Londoner himself. Over to our left, that rather unusually shaped uh, skyscraper, that's one of London's newest skyscrapers, that number one black boys. As you pretty much find out, London's do not give a nickname to a bridge. Hey, hey, hey,
Yeah, I think I think I'm passing big bench or something. 